So what can we learn from these stories well, on storytelling? <laughs> uh, first of all, thank you very much for, for sharing that story about the safety and the understanding that you could have uh, when changing with the horse. Also for sharing a difficult story about compensation and feeling detached from the land. I think that with this exercise we wanted to share with, to experience, actually, the power of the stories. And we can tell stories from at least three perspectives. The perspective of the one who is telling the story, who wants to communicate some emotions, some feelings, but also the perspective of the one who is listening the story, who understands and interpret that story from their own knowledge but also the perspective of the context in which that story is told and reshaped. We have reshaped each other's stories and we are sharing them in the context of this learning transdisciplinary conference because we somehow want to imagine how to use the power of the storytelling for transdisciplinary education and learning. So with this small exercise, we wanted to invite you to uh, be part of this, of this storytelling or experience by yourself the storytelling, but also to imagine how can we use it. Um, and I also want you not to feel afraid if perhaps you don't feel a professional in storytelling, because uh, transdisciplinarity also questions the, way, the professionalization of knowledge and the uh, values, experience and practice, which is also important when we are trying to create and address societal challenges. Yeah. Uh, and if I may add, as a teacher, I'm always uh, not this start, but I ask myself, and I think we should all ask ourselves, um, and reflect all the stories that I always hear uh, after such type of uh, exercise are never stories that take place in the classroom. Eh? And so that brings us back to experience, eh? but, eh, eh, and still, eh, we spend a lot of time in the classroom so that asking ourselves how we can um, transfer or uh, reproduce, is it possible, eh, to, how to, can we make our classroom more similar to those best learning experience that we have. And perhaps storytelling is uh, one way, because I think as uh, Juliet mentions, everyone can tell a story, so, and stories are about experience, and story also allows us to um, emotionally connect, eh, to feel empathy for, uh, for the, the topic. I stories are subjective by nature because they are shaped by our experience and our, our perception of a situation. And then the question, it is scientific, uh, scientific by definition, try to give objecti objective knowledge, right? So how can we make of, 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 scientific, of stories a scientific way of collecting data? Maybe the first thing that I want to say it is that who collects the data? <laughs> Facts are also subjective in a way because it depends on how do we collect the data. So it is first acknowledging that even in science there is a subjectivity, so that's first. The second it is to recognize that uh, stories and facts are not exclusive but complementary so that we kind of uh, enrich the context of our facts if we try to understand the stories around. And also to realize that for science and for storytelling, there is a reflective practice, meaning that we need maybe in general to think more about what are the uh, intended and unintended consequences of the stories and the facts that we tell. Because both, whether they are objectively or subjectively shared, have an impact in the person that we are telling and in the context that we are telling those, those stories and facts. Mm. Would you like to add or? Uh, yeah, no, if I think about this, uh, this very seminar, what comes up to my mind is that today and even this morning, we've heard several stories and I still remember them vividly. For instance, I, um, I remember of, of, 
of course, the story of Capuchetto Rosso, which I don't know how to <laughs> still have to learn the name, eh? but uh, of course, that connected to me. And, and why is the, uh, stories are important for transdisciplinarity? Not only because they are easy to remember, eh? so, but also because they um, allow us to avoid the jargon the disciplinary jargon. Eh? I think I find this very important. So Susanna, as an ingen engineer architect, she was telling me a story about complexity through uh, Capuchetto Rosso. I still remember. I also enjoyed very much the story of the artificial intelligence calling the, the ambulance. Eh? And it's something that will stick to, to my mind. So I think uh, there was a very, um, I think, an interesting, a good, and effective use of stories that I've uh, listened to uh, today. And, um, and the power of stories to, to connect, to connect the experience of others from, to our experience. So for instance, um, I was still puzzled by this morning panel about bridges and walls. I'm not a positivist, I would rather consider myself a constructivist of my approach, but still I was thinking, okay, a bridge is a bridge, it cannot be a wall. <laughs> so there is ambivalence, but there, are also, there is also reality. Yeah? And then how is this? So I wasn't that convinced until I found the answer right in front of me, eh? which is so, this is Amsterdam, I live in Delft, and um, which is a small Amsterdam somehow, the rhizome of Amsterdam extends to Delft. And every morning I cycle with my uh, kids to school in those uh, type of re uh, yellow roads. And sometimes we have to cross bridges. And if you're familiar with the Netherlands, you know that bridges are sometimes very low. So indeed, and, and the boats cannot pass by uh, unless the bridges open or lift up and the four closes for, for the bus. And that's our usual excuse if we are late at school to the teachers, right? <laughs> Sorry, the bridge was closed. And then I say, you see, a bridge can also be a wall if you are on the boat <laughs> or if you're on a bike. And so I've learned about the importance of perspective taking. And stories are very good, as Juliette say, eh, to learn also to teach the students how to take and learn and reflect about their perspective. Are they the author? Are they the audience? And from which perspective is the story told? For whom? So I think it's a, it was an interesting reflection <laughs> about bridges and what. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it remembers me of the text of Robert now Moses, The Bridges of Broken, or I don't know. Um, no, 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 no. There was something different. Um, um, yeah, for me as a social scientist, I guess it's storytelling makes totally sense. Uh, and we can, we can see in society, in nowadays societies, that we are have an extensive use of storytelling methods. So my most favorite and most hated example is the platform LinkedIn, where everyone shares every day thousands of, I had this nine to five workshop and now I'm a completely other human being and look different on these and that and have a, a picture where I'm looking thoughtful and in, into the future or something. So for me as a social scientist, this is great data material, but... Um, <laughs> But how can we really make sense of stories? So what is a really, really, yeah, what can, we, what can we take out of stories? Do we have maybe some examples from your own work where you created meaningful stories that really had impact? Oh, damn it, I should have prepared this question to you. <laughs> <laughs> meaningful stories that we create impact based. Uh, or, or maybe you uh, have some, some examples how you use storytelling or imagination practices in your well, work. Well, I think, so let's, let's define impact first. <laughs> or let's, let's try to think what is impact for us. Or for me at least. So for me, impact is about empowering people. So that, that is when I feel I have done impact. And... Uh, with Emmanuel, we have been working on empowering students and researchers 
to use storytelling as their own practice. And I think that it is mm, so, it's so encouraging when we have the students uh, that come perhaps to the uh, video blogging course, but also the researchers who want to share a very complicated, uh, uh, you know, well, we always researchers want to share a very complicated thing about our, our work, maybe because we want to show that we know, I don't know. And then suddenly that we tell them, okay, maybe you have three things to tell. Uh, and maybe you need to make sure that uh, you, the person that you are telling that remember, uh, that uh, maybe you, that you also have one message to communicate, and that you focus on trying to connect through emotions. And then we give them the challenge of either making a video or making a blog. Um, and then we also challenge them to work with their audience, so it is not them creating their story on their own, but also trying to shape it with their own audience. So for me, the most powerful and impactful moment is when they tell me, hey, Juliet, we have fun and we enjoyed making stories uh, that we learned through the process. So I guess that that was my, is my impactful story about using storytelling and I try to repeat it every day.